Professor Giulia Galli, thanks for making time for us. Uh, so this year ISNAF celebrates the 15th anniversary and you are the recipient of ISNAF Lifetime Achievement Award. Congratulations. It's a real honor for me. And uh, I must say that when I received the phone call from uh, Professor Saleo telling me about that, I was really delighted <laughs> to hear that. Thank you very much. Uh, let's start by talking um, about your career. You are professor of electronic structure and simulations at the uh, University of Chicago. You were previously professor at UC Davis and the head of the quantum simulations group at the Lawrence Livermore National Lab in the Bay Area. You are the recipient of uh, several important awards and a member of the National Academy of Science, et cetera, et cetera. Is there anything that I did not mention that you would like, uh, you would like to add? Yeah, for sure. I, uh, uh, all of my education was actually uh, in Italy. This is uh, uh, in a thing that I always uh, care to mention. Uh, my undergraduate was in my hometown in Modena in Italy. And then I got my PhD from the International School of Advanced Studies in Trieste. And then I was a postdoc in the United States. At that point, I thought that I would go back to Europe. And I went to work for IBM first and then for the Swiss Institute of Technology. And uh, I was there for about uh, altogether, I would say six, seven years after the PhD. And then I went back to the United States. So in a way, my career has been between two worlds, uh, the European and uh, the American world, but I have been fully educated in Italy. And, um... You are an expert in the development of theoretical and computational methods to predict and engineer material and molecular properties. So can you tell us a few highlights of your research? So uh, I think that one highlight of uh, the research very uh, recent, let me start from a very recent highlight, has been uh, uh, to be able using our methodology, which are really rooted in quantum mechanics. Uh, and using those methodologies, the theory that we have developed and coupled with com computer codes to look at materials that may be useful for quantum information technologies. We have been able to do that because uh, also we have a very close and fruitful collaboration with experimentalists here in Chicago. And I think that this is a recent highlight of our work. And going a little bit back uh, uh, on a different in, in time, but on uh, a different highlight is uh, uh, looking at uh, uh, predicting materials for energy, for sustainable energy. What I mean is uh, specifically materials that, uh, for example, we can use to build photoelectrochemical cells. And this is a research that started much earlier than the research on uh, materials for quantum technology, but it's still continuing to these days. And you see, these are very different uh, uh, types of materials that we can look at and try to predict properties of because the methodologies that we have developed are quite general and uh, based and rooted in quantum mechanics. Uh, thank you. And um, let me see. So, and what can you tell us about your experience as a woman in science, uh, both in the States and in Italy? What were and are the major challenges? Uh, how did it change it over time? And uh, what are the differences between the uh, United States and Italy in this regard? So, these are many questions in one <laughs> kind of, you know, uh, difficult question. So, um, I, I, I think that uh, certainly, let, let me start with a positive note, and the positive note is that uh, uh, what I've seen so far has been a constant improvement. There is much, much uh, uh, more to do, but a constant improvement of uh, uh, including uh, women in uh, uh, leadership position in uh, the scientific world, uh, uh, and also attracting more students uh, in, in, in STEM. Um, there is still a lot to do. And uh, uh, there is uh, especially, you know, I, I don't know if there is a difference, a real difference that I can point out between uh, uh, Europe and uh, the United States, but there is 
a huge disparity in the United States, and not only for this problem, but for many other problems, uh, between institutions. What I mean is that, uh, you know, if you are at uh, a, a, a richer institution, if you are at, uh, you know, one of the top institution, of course, you also have uh, uh, programs that uh, people, of course, realize they have to be devised and, and, and promoted to, uh, for diversity and so on and so forth. But if you are at a different kind of institution, it's much more difficult. And uh, this is a disparity that you see all over the place and you also see in promoting diversity. And uh, we should make a real effort, in my opinion, to promote the diversity at all level in all institutions. So I consider myself super lucky uh, in the sense that uh, I uh, 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 have never experienced in my career um, real drawbacks because I am a woman. I have experienced, and even these days, right? Or, you know, at my age, even these days, I do experience kind of, you know, uh, I wouldn't say demeaning comments, but you can tell, you know, how people look at you because you are a woman. But I've never experienced anything, neither in Italy nor here, that have prevent, prevented me to progress in my career. Uh, I'm not sure this is the rule. I know of uh, uh, other colleagues who have been much less lucky than I have been. Uh, and, um, you know, at the end of the day, this is a problem that goes back to education that start at the primary level, then middle school, high school, and it's there that uh, we should start treating this problem. And we are not always doing that. Thank you. Yeah. And can you tell us an example of how you try to encourage diversity in your, in your lab, in your group? Is there anything that you have noticed it's successful and you would like to yeah. share? So, you know, one thing that uh, uh, I am ashamed to say, but uh, I understood uh, kind of late in my career uh, is that uh, either you do, you actively work at recruiting women and diversity and you spend time on this, or you don't even contribute vaguely to solve the problem. And what I mean is the following that, you know, especially when I was younger, actually for many years, when I tried to, because I wanted to establish myself, I wanted to be successful. Uh, whenever I was hiring, if I had, uh, you know, two white men postdoc who were very good in front of me, I would hire them right away without thinking, let's stop for a moment and see whether I can go out there, recruit you know, more women or more diversity because I was too worried about my own success. And then at some point I understood that this is not going to cut it. You have to invest some of your time to go out there and recruit. Even if you have in front of you the best postdoc, ask yourself, can I make an effort to see whether I can attract maybe a student who's shyer or didn't apply yet, who's a woman or a minority. And I need to be honest, I don't always do this every time, but at least I have learned how to do that. And uh, either you put some of your time, this is time, right? Uh, in recruiting and not only getting the application and choosing among the pool that you have, or uh, you will not even start contributing to the problem. And then I make an effort when I have people in my group to make sure that uh, they are all uh, well integrated. Sometimes I'm successful, sometimes, you know, it's a work in progress. <laughs> like everything. The Italian um, diaspora, is it only a brain drain for Italy or do we contribute to Italian society? And if so, how? Yeah, that's uh, a, 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 an excellent question. and. Uh, you know, very dear to my heart because I, 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 I've thought, I don't have a good answer, but uh, I have thought many times about that. And, uh, um, you know, certainly uh, 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 we contribute somehow to uh, uh, the Italian society and uh, 
uh, you know, with, with, with the example given to, to, to students and to young people of uh, uh, how much uh, difference in science somebody completely educated in Italy can make. And uh, so th th this is good. However, uh, we should have, I have uh, ties with Italy. I, you know, in the last two years, not quite, but, you know, I used to go to Italy very often and I will start again. Uh, but uh, we should find better mechanism to uh, give back to what, you know, the United States got us uh, and we were completely educated with the Italian taxpayer money, right? <laughs> and they got us ready to use, <laughs> so to speak. So uh, we should find uh, better avenues and better ways to give back. Um, Somehow we, we do in contributing to, you know, scientific advisory board, the lecturing and stuff like that, but we should do much more than that. And we should all think about new ways of giving, giving back to Italy for sure. And the scientific collaboration between Italy and North America in your field, what are the major initiatives? What do you think is most successful and what are the major challenges? So in my field, they are very strong. Uh, so uh, Europe and especially Italy in my field, which is the field of electronic structure is very, very strong. And there are, for example, codes that uh, are used all over the world that uh, were born and developed and are still developed in Italy, for example, in Trieste and also in other parts and, and in Europe. And uh, there is a culture that is very well developed in this field and also in the computational material science. Uh, and we have uh, a lot of connection uh, with the scientists in Italy and uh, we have collaboration. Um, and uh, uh, I, I wish that uh, the funding agency in the United States would start some of the project, for example, that they had in the past uh, to fund more collaborative projects between uh, uh, the US and, and uh, uh, Europe, for example, NSF. But uh, uh, I think that we have a good base to, to build upon. If, uh, 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 and, and also, uh, honestly, uh, all the, uh, in, the, in the quantum technologies areas, there are a lot of uh, collaboration that uh, we could establish for sure. And we will, hopefully, in the future. And uh, one last question, uh, what piece of advice would you give a young woman scientist coming to North America from Italy? Well, uh, so I, I, I think that uh, uh, a young woman, especially coming to the United States, a uh, life is not going uh, the, the balance between personal life and career uh, is not going to be easy. And uh, the, per, the, the, the woman in question needs to be very aware of that uh, and plan because uh, especially in the United States, much more in my opinion than in Europe and in Italy, people will push you to just uh, focus like crazy on your career and maybe the balance would be a little bit shifted, especially because unlike in, in Europe, for example, people have much, uh, women have much less time off for uh, when they have kids. So the piece of advice would be to resist the push to work being completely workaholic that would come to a certain, a, a certainly from some institution here and uh, to work hard at a balance uh, between you know, your personal life, your interest uh, and your scientific career because uh, this balance uh, in any case will be enriching even for your career if this is what you care mostly about. And that of course will be much easier if there were more women uh, in your lab or in your, in your companies. But... Yeah, and it would be much easier because of course all the uh, uh, issues and, and problems that you are going on just related to the fact of being a woman and uh, so on and so forth, uh, just the fact of being understood better by the other people in your lab would uh, 
contribute to helping you solving the problem, that's for sure. Grazie, Giulia. Certo, piacere mio.